All right. Notes 8.4 of the old side splitting theorem. So if you think back to the old uh, triangle mid segment, we did that all the way back uh, lesson 4.6. That the mid segment of a triangle is parallel to one side of the triangle and that its length is half the length of the base of the triangle. The side splitting theorem applies to any segment that is parallel to one side of the triangle. So any segment that's parallel to it. So what the triangle or the side splitting theorem says is that a line parallel to one side of the triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. So it divides it proportionally. So if we think about this, we have our triangle here. So here's our triangle. And these are parallel, so these two are parallel. Well, you have the upper left, upper right, the lower left, the lower right. And now you have the whole side here and the whole other side here. So the whole and the whole. So we can write a bunch of different proportions. So we have the upper left and the lower left is equal to the upper right and the lower right. The upper left over the whole left is, is equal to the upper right and the whole right. The upper left, the upper right is equal to the lower left and the lower right. The lower left, the whole left is equal to the lower right and the whole right. So we're just comparing the left, something on the left side to something on the right side. So now if we look at a couple of these examples. So you can use the side splitting theorem to find x in these triangles. So what we can do here is that we can say that we have our upper left, so 12 to 16 is proportional to 15 to x, so 15 over x. So we can set this up and then we can cross multiply, so we will do 12 times x, which is 12x, 15 times 16, divide by 12, and x would equal 20. So now when we look at the second one, we have our side splitting theorem. Well, this is parallel to this, so we can say 4 and 5. So 4 to 5, so the upper left and the uh, lower left, or yeah. And now this is 2. Well, this side right here, if the whole thing is x, this side is x minus 2. So it's going to be 2 over x minus 2. Since the whole thing is x, that little part there is x minus 2. And then we can solve this. So we can solve it, so we cross multiply, that would be 10 equals 4x minus 8. Add 8 to both sides, so 18 equals 4x and 4.5 equals x. Now we can also set this up a different way. So if we do this 4 we have this side, which is 4, to the whole thing, which is 9. So we can say it's 4 to 9. All right, so we're doing the, this side to the entire side length. So that's going to be this to the entire length. So that's 2 to x, which will give us 4x equals 18. And we know that 4x equals 18 because we just had it right there. So we're going to get x equals 4.5. So either way we set up, we're going to get the same exact answer. So the next thing, the two transversal, the two transversal proportionality correlate states that three or more parallel lines divide two intersecting transverse, transversals proportionally. So they divide the transversals proportionally. So if we think about these, we have all three of these parallel lines. We have our uh, transversals. They divide them proportionally. So we can say that when looking at this, you know, we have this x, y, and y, z. So x, y, and y, z is proportional to this side, which is a, b, and b, c. So it divides them all proportionally. Now we can practice using our side splitting theorem. So we can set this up so we can do 2 to 10 and 3 to x. So 2 to 10 
equals 3 to x cross multiply so 30 equals 2x divide by 2 and x equals 15 the next one once again we can do 4 and 6 so 4 to 6 equals x to 9 so x over 9 we cross multiply so we get 36 equals 6x six divide by 6 and 6 is equal to x And if we look at these next ones, just practice some of these. So once again, we have x to 24. So x over 24 equals 8 over 20. So you cross multiply, you get 20x equals 8 times 24. You divide by 20. So x is going to equal, so we do 8 times 24 divided by 20, 9.6. So we have for this one, 3 to 4, so 3 to 4 equals 6 to x. Top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. Cross multiply, 3x equals 24, x equals 8. And if we look at this one now, this is saying the whole side. So we want the whole side, so the whole side is going to be 7 plus x, but there might be an easier rate, way to write that. So if we know we have 7, we have x, this whole side is 15. Well, we know that this part right here is going to be 9. So since we can use 9, so we can say 9 to 6. So 9 to 6 equals x to 7. Now cross multiply, so 6x equals 63 divide by 6 and x equals 10.5 we could have also did we could have set this up as the whole length to the bottom part so we could have did uh, 7 plus x over 7 equals the whole all right, 15 over 6 and cross multiplied and we would wind up with the same answer so once again here, we know that since x is the whole part, this whole part is 11. So we're going to do 6 to 11, or, or 6 to x and 8 to 11, since we're talking about the, its top to whole. So 8 to 11, top is 6, to the whole part is x. Cross multiply, so 66 equals 8x, divide by 8 x equals 8.25 now for this last one what we get here is we set this up top to or left top to bottom so it's 4 over x equals x over 9 cross multiply and now we get x times x equals 36. Well, we know that this is x squared equals 36. You take the square root of this, and x is equal to 6 or negative 6, because negative 6 times negative 6 is also 36. But we can't, we know that we can't have a negative side line, so x has to be positive 6. So now there's three more uh, real world problems there. Let's try to work them out, and we'll go over them in class on the next day.